welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome to Tracked and Truth Tuesday. You heard me right, Tracked and Truth. For over 10 years now, every Tuesday, we have set aside our typical study through a book of the Bible just to take our Tuesday times to encourage and strengthen one another in being gospel servants, both with the spoken word, talking to lost people eyeball to eyeball, and obviously through the use of gospel tracts. And I hope you are using gospel tracts. So let me just say welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. Today, my Bible sits open to the Gospel of John chapter 12. If you can, turn there with me, please. John chapter 12. And as I always do, I've got a gospel tract in my hand. I'm going to highlight that tract here in just a moment, and I will be encouraging you to get from us a free sample packet of our gospel tract. So why don't you reach over and not only open your Bible to John 12, but also get out a pen and paper and be ready to jot down some contact information. But let me lead into our time together this way. Listen to these words. Here they are. It abideth alone. It abideth alone. Do you know those words? Well, if you are one that typically reads through their Bible regularly, you probably remember where these words came from. They come from John 12 here and verse 24. They're the words of Jesus. They're spoken on the day or the couple of days before his crucifixion. They were spoken to Jesus' disciples, yes, but even more importantly, they were spoken to a group of Gentile proselytes. Now, these Gentiles knew who Jesus was because they knew Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead. These Gentile proselytes appeared to be honest seekers of eternal life. And most likely, these Gentiles who were told in verse 20 had come to Jerusalem to worship at the Passover. Most likely, as I said, they'd already been proselytes to Judaism, but they had heard the stories of Jesus and were seeking to figure out who Jesus might really be. Is Jesus really the Messiah? So they came to the disciples. Philip, and they made this statement, we would see Jesus. Well, let me just put that in Mark Smith everyday language. Here's what they're saying. We desire to see Jesus. We want to have clarity. We want to have understanding. We want to have the right perception. Is Jesus the Messiah? Who is he really? Now, the answer that Jesus gives this group of earnest learners is not at all what they expected. You and I who want to see others saved from sin need to hear Jesus' reply to these Gentile proselytes. Get your Bible open to John chapter 12. I mentioned the gospel tracts here a moment ago. A gospel tract is simply an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. In light of what we're going to be looking at here, I have picked up this particular track. It's entitled, The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. The Tragedy of a Wasted Life. It tells the true story, the highlights of a story of a man God called. Now, the man is a believer, but God called him to serve him full time, to be a preacher. But the man refused to do that. He did not lose his salvation, but oh, the tragedy of a wasted life. Now, friend, this gospel track, yes, it will tell the gospel. It will clearly lay out how a person can receive Christ as Savior, but it will challenge your heart as a believer as well. I do not want to stand before God having the tragedy of an earthly life, knowing Christ, but it wasted because I'd done nothing for Jesus Christ. There are 
40 tracks in that sample packet. Please, I want to send that to you. Would you let me? It's free of charge. Let me send you the sample packet, but I do need your name and address. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you three ways by which you can contact us. They all work just fine. If you cannot stay to the end of the program, you can order that free sample packet at our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to John 12, let me read uh, four verses. First of all, 24 and 25 say this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. I'm jumping down to 32 and 33. And I, Jesus says, I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. This, he said, signifying what death he should die. Let's just stop right there. Now, these statements that I've read are from Jesus. They were part of his answer to those guys wanting to know with certainty if Jesus was the true God of salvation or just a prophet or a teacher about God. You and I need to be able to have that fact clearly in our brain. Let me read a couple of notes to you here. I just this week received this note from country of Liberia in West Africa. The man there uses our tracks. He ordered more tracks, and he says, I gave out all of the last order. I saw at least 20 people come to know Jesus Christ as Savior. I need more tracks. Here's a man sharing the gospel, seeing fruit from his labor. This one comes from a lady in Wisconsin. Thank you, Pastor Smith and staff, for the Spanish Bible tracts you recently sent me and the English equivalent so I could know what was being said in the Spanish tracts. Your ministry is greatly appreciated. I hope someday you have tracts for people who are immigrating from the Punjab region in India to California. I believe the language they speak is Hindi. And then they give their name. Well, we do actually have printed some tracks in Hindi, but not in uh, a place that we could give to this lady. They are printed over in the country of uh, India itself. Now, friend, I say, read those letters simply to remind you that there are people actively involved in seeing the gospel go forth, and they are seeing fruit. I want to help you see fruit, gospel fruit, from your life and work. Let me send you those tracks. Have pen and paper ready at the end of the program. Well, I've had us here open to John chapter 12, and the chapter opens, if you look back at the beginning, with the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. The next chapter, chapter 13, begins with Jesus in the upper room there with the disciples on the night he's going to be betrayed. So our verses here in chapter 12 fall in a time period where just the hours or day or so before Jesus' life is given up there on the cross at a place called Golgotha. Verses 23 to 36 are a section that I have titled Timely Explanation. Timely Explanation. And as I said, these Gentile proselytes asked Jesus. They want to see Jesus. And when they're brought to Jesus, Jesus begins to talk to them about his death. Verse 32 says, if I be lifted up. And then verse 33 pointedly states that Jesus was talking about the way that he would die. Uh, but, But come back to these Gentile proselytes. They say, we would see Jesus. Jesus answers them something like this. Oh, you want to see me, do you? You want to grasp and perceive who I really am, do you? Well, then look at my death. Look at the fact that I am going to die. Look at the way I'm going to die. I'm going to be lifted up. But first, Jesus says, look at why I am going to die. Friend, why did Jesus die? Well, his answer here is in verse 24. Again, let me read it. Verily, verily. Those words identify this as of utmost importance. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Jesus died to produce a harvest. If he dies, there's going to be much fruit, he said. And you and I can say amen to that. There's been much fruit. I'm part of it. Probably you are as well. 
But I did not read verse 25. There, Jesus moves from his death and life to our lives. We cannot love our life if we want to be like Jesus. We must be like a grain of wheat, a seed like Jesus was. Verse 26 talks about the fact that And I remind you, Jesus is again talking here to these Gentile followers here. He says that we must be where he is. That place where he is, is a place. Now, that understanding of where he is, if we're going to follow Christ, we've got to be where he is. Well, where is that? There are two ways to understand that. It can refer to heaven. If we follow Jesus, we will go to heaven and be with him. That is a good and proper and rightful interpretation. But secondly, this where he is can refer to a spiritual place, a place of self-surrender and dying to self. This is also a legitimate understanding of Jesus' words. Perhaps the answer to why so many, well, let me just put it this way, the American body of Christ. There's only one body of Christ. I know that, but the American slice of that. Why is the American slice of the body of Christ seeing fewer converts than other people in other parts of the globe are seeing? Might it be due to our unwillingness to die, to self, to be like that grain? The principle of an abundant harvest from John 12 is that one grain, one grain must die. If it does not die, it abides alone. But if one grain dies, it will bring forth much fruit. Are you that one grain? Am I going to be that one grain? Are you and I seeing fruit from our gospel work? Are you and I striving to even do gospel work? If perhaps, probably, you and I are not seeing fruit from our gospel work, more than likely part of the answer might be that we are lacking in this whole idea of dying to self, dying to the idols in our hearts. We Americans, oh, we would never be caught bowing down to some idol, although we have some immigrants who bring their idols with them and they do exactly that. I have friends that do that, that live in my town here. I've shared the gospel with them. And I would say, no, I'm not an idol worshiper. But then the Spirit of God begins to poke at my heart. My American desire to, well, to be liked, my American desire to have a standard of living, my American desire to not look bad in front of others, my American desire to, well, to get along. I don't want to make waves and ripples. I'm unwilling to die to self. Is that the reason? that some of us are not finding fruit from our gospel work. The, The point of an abundant harvest is this. A grain of wheat must die. Let's pray and say, Dear Holy Spirit, is there an area in my life that I'm not dead to Christ in yet? Show it to me and I will die to you today. Get those gospel tracks from us today. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.